this is me, Rowan Huang. <laughs> I figure, well, since I wanted to talk about chanting, I might well just get it over with. You know. <laughs> so anyway, before I start, let me first introduce myself. My name is Rowan Huang. I'm an author, spirit coach, and also a psychic. Now, after talking about the Heart Sutra, now I'm going to talk about the Great Compassion Mantra. Again, if you're not Buddhism, or if in your family is not Buddhism, you probably got no clue, so you don't really have to listen to this. But, you know, for majority of us who somehow somewhat influenced by uh, Buddhism, <laughs> and then you wonder why people chant all the time, it's a very commonly chant with the Heart Sutra and the Compassion uh, mantra. They both have very different. Um, they have very different effect, and I'm hoping on this episode I can explain it all to you. Of course, there are way more chanting than this, but what I'm saying is just those two mostly common use, and then the two that I actually, you know, spend years studying or look into it. So again, if you have question to other chanting, I might know a little bit but definitely not as detailed as I do with those two. So um, just hoping this episode can explain why, why people chant the way they chant or why people chant this but not that. And hopefully that will answer majority of the question even if you are second generation and you don't understand what is it, what is it that your parents are chanting all the time. Uh, very likely this is one of them. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, Buddhism based a lot on paying your debt, paying your debt to the visible or invisible, right? Common gratitude take a big part of our religions, which, you know, most of, it's very foreign uh, concept to, to the other religions, but it is the big thing, big deal for our religion. So, very often we are asked to chant the Heart Sutra, which I already explained why. Now this is the second one. Very often people will ask you to chant the Great Compassion Mantra, and then you're going to ask what the heck is Great Compassion Mantra. I don't blame you because I myself don't even understand what I meant. When I was first told to read it, I'm reading the word thinking, what the heck is this? You know what I mean? Because I got no idea what it is about. I can look into the dictionary. Seriously, I can read every single word, but when they're together, I really, I'm lost. I just, I... <laughs> it just went over my head. I got no idea. But then again, I was told I had to chant it. I had to read it. I had to read it out loud, even though I got no clue what it meant. So sure enough, based on the same question, I started to look into what it is that I had to read. I myself have a very different experience with the great compassion mantra than I did with any other chanting. The reason of that is the first time I read the great compassion mantra, when I was reading it, Every time I finish a sentence, something pop up. How can I describe it? It was, um, have you ever seen the wooden carving Buddha? The wooden carving Buddha? <laughs> they are about like this big. I don't know how big they are. They are about this big. And then they are wooden carving. So every time I finish a phrase, a Buddha will pop up. <laughs> and then I finish second phrase, second one will pop up. If I finish a third phrase, the third one will pop up. You see? I don't know about you, but I myself got freaked out. <laughs> I was a little bit freaked out. <laughs> and I literally mean freaked out. So I had to call my auntie at that time, who's the one who very much guide me through this, start me with this whole spiritual journey, right? So I was telling her, I don't think I should read this. She's like, no, you should. I said, no, I, I really don't think I should read this because it's different from the previous chanting. This chanting, some Buddha pop up. <laughs> and then she said, well, you should continue doing that and see what happened. I said, I am afraid to continue reading it because I'm afraid to see what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So it took me a little bit resistant to to read this, to chant this. The reason of that is if you were me, every time you read something, something, something pop up, right? You kind of get a little bit freaked out because you really don't know what I do. So... <laughs> It took me a while, but I did eventually try to overcome my fear. And then I tried to re-read it. Okay. By reading, what it does is, each phrase I read, one Buddha would pop up. Eventually, it would circle a big, a big, it would circle up, and then it would end it. So it would usually, it always start with my right hand. Every time I read it, it always start with my right hand. It always finish on my left hand. So... Just imagine, imagine you're reading, you find a comfortable chair, you sit down, you try to read. Every time you read, and then you feel a Buddha just pop up, and you continue reading, you just see another Buddha pop up. Now, 
the question for you. I don't know if you have a question. Why are we creating a circle? What is this? Is like group therapy or something? <laughs> like what? Are, what is it that we try to do? I mean, I'm thinking, I'm reading it just so my comic creditor can feel happy and leave me alone. Now, why am I creating a circle here? <laughs> so why am I creating a circle? So sure enough, I start to realize very different, very different from the hot sutra, which is often used to make people self-reflect themselves or hoping for them to let go of something. Um, the great compassion mantra have a very special power. It's not so much asking you to let go, but it to reveal what your true self is. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys understand what that meant. Um, let me put it this way. Have you ever lived your life to a point that you feel you're not you anymore? You're not you anymore? Or sometimes maybe you are blind by greed, you are blind by jealousy, you are blind by something, you are no longer you? We all gone through that sometimes, especially if we have craving, we have, you know, um, greed. That usually will push, her to push us to become someone like someone that we can hardly recognize so as ghost it does happen that way as well which in quite a great scale so what this great compassion uh, mantra does at least for me from my observation is anything within great compassion mantra you will reveal who you are you know what I mean not what you think you are but it will reveal your true self within your true self you you got to be you, you know what I mean? So it's almost um, just imagine someone go to the war and then they were all, you know, wounded or they are totally, you know, broken. And then when they are within the circle, you then got brought back to your original you. It got restored. It's like a reset button. Does that make sense? It got, it's like a reset button. You now become a factory setting. <laughs> I think that's the best way I can give it to you guys. I then put any soul into a factory setting. <laughs> so so then we can work with you. So so because I start to understand this concept or start to observe what it does to the spirits, that's why some spirits require the heart sutra, some spirits require the great compassion sutra, because it really depends on what it is that they need. So because through this exercise with karma creditor, I start to realize there's a lot of things I can do within this uh, group therapy. <laughs> Trust me, with a lot of Buddha, <laughs> they are not just one. I would say there are at least 50 of them, <laughs> minimum 50 of them, all right? So within 50 Buddha, <laughs> you literally will become the, your true self, your original you. Because I understand this, the effect of the circle, then I start to know how big can I expand it or what can I do with it. So I start to realize which great compassion sutra is. You can literally use it on anywhere, any place. That doesn't have to be your comic creditor. That is, if I want to set a um, parameter around my house, I don't want any spirit to come in there and just come into my house and totally mess up the spirit. I can also use the great compassion mantra. What it does is you then set a parameter around my house that whatever best spirits or what you think best spirits or whatever power spirit that you think they have. <laughs> Come into this parameter, they have no other choice but only to reveal who they truly are. You know what I mean? So when you are within this, you can, you know, sometimes, well, I do see some crazy spirits and claiming they have a lot of power, you know, I also realize I can, I too can use the great compassion sutra. What it mantra? What does it do? Is I will then reveal who they are, so they are not who they think they are. Like they can kill people, or they can hurt people, or the great power they have. Very often, I found any spirits under the circle of the great. Uh, compassion mantra become very powerless. So because they become very powerless, you you be more able to work with them, <laughs> work with them or put them away or ask them to leave <laughs> because they too got shocked 
why they have become very powerless. So because if you understand, now you understand what really the great um, compassion mantra does, you will start to realize, okay, then I will be protected. If I know, if myself, I have a strong enough power. That's why I often say it's not about what you do or read. Guys, anything you want to do, I don't care what religions you really want to get into, I really don't care. Secure your own energy first, because if your energy is not secure, if your energy is not strong, you really, you can, you're not able to expand your energy to protect others because you'll be somewhat broken. But once you have a strong um, energy that you believe in yourself and you really stand strong on your ground, you will start to realize that, it, that energy very often reflect on your spiritual energy as well. In this case, I realize it reflects exactly the same whenever I'm reading the, the great compassion mantra. Do I still use it now? Yes. Even though I don't chant it out loud every day, which I didn't know why I chant it, but it is now I will use it with conscious. I actually know what I'm doing it, right? Great compassion mantra. Let me say it again. What does it do? It make you reveal who you truly are. Sometimes you get lost. It doesn't matter. It brings you back to your origin. It shows you what you are, right? So anyway, just a little chanting with you. I'm not even sure it makes sense. I don't think most of Westerners chant. I don't think most of English speaker, speaking people chant either, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. But <laughs> just again, if you guys want to know what are those two chantings about, one is again, very commonly used, Heart Sutra. What it does is help you reflect yourself. What does a great compassion Sutra a mantra does what it does is if you are able to form a circle, if you're able to form a circle, most of the time people don't. What it does is what I would say to read it right, to read it correctly, it would be more important. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter if your energy is strong, if your energy is strong. You can create that very solid bonding. Only when you are questioned, you're doubting yourself. When you make mistakes, you create that fear. Then you may create a hole in between the circle for people to run away. But what the meaning does, I myself don't know what the meaning is. I'm going to hear honest with you. I don't know what it meant. But I know every time I read it, I'm calling someone. So I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume. Um, to great compassion, etc. Uh, mantra is actually a chain that is calling greater source to help you, to empower you, not their energy, not continue, not just calling them so you can use their energy, but to call upon them, call them to use, to give you force and power and generate that energy that you wanted. What does that energy do? That energy pretty much will force spirits, very often spirits to reveal who they are who they truly are. So I don't know they work so much. I mean, I use it on myself. Unless I'm very, I don't, unless I'm not very different from myself. Otherwise, I don't see much effect within myself. But, you know, uh, I use it on other people. I don't, I don't really see direct effect on people. Or maybe I just don't see it. But if in regard of the spirits throughout time, I do use it a lot. I use it as a shell. I use it as a parameter when I want to work on certain spirits. You know, it's like a, a session group, right? I can talk to you nicely when I put you in the circle. Some of them are not really nice. So, so that would force me to gate them. So in that, in that case, I will use this. So if you want to know what it does, I'm here to share with you what what is it for me? Again, if you like what I'm doing, you can always join me live on Facebook or go to subscribe my YouTube channel or I2 podcast or my website, ruwn.com. Till then, i see you guys next time. Bye.